Welcome to the Mother Tree Network, Dr. Sina Smith. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much, Aminata, for having me today. I'm, I'm really delighted to be back. So talk to us about the fall. Give us some yeah. understanding about the fall season. What's good for us in the fall? So the summer is all about outward movement, right? We get outside, we're running around outside, the plants and the trees are all flowering. They're putting their energy out. They're putting their energy into creating fruit. They're, cre you know, everything is growing and outward. The fall then is about the beginning of that retraction back to the time of being the seed, which is the winter time. Mm. So it's about letting go. And I, I think about that metaphorically and also, you know, naturalistically, the leaves and the trees are doing this. If they don't let go of their leaves, they have the potential to, to truly have catastrophic things happen to themselves, right? In the winter time, when that cold weather comes, they have to let go of their leaves. And so fall is the, the emotion that goes with fall is grief and sadness because it is about letting go of the things that we were clinging to. So that might be other people, that might be things in our closet, that might be things in our physical space, that might be work things, but it is, the, the fall is about allowing those things to pass through us, that which is not serving to be released and to let go. So the emotions that are the uh, organ systems that go with the fall are the large intestine, because that's what the large intestine is doing, right? It's letting go. <laughs> and then the lung, which is taking in the air and letting go of that which is not helpful. The fall is also the metal organ. So it goes with our skin. So a lot of people have skin problems that start to sort of show up in the fall if their metal system is not healthy. And one of the things that I recommend to people whenever they have skin problems, and this is going to sound a little goofy, but really it works, is watching sad movies. Because the sadness, when it's held inside of our body, affects the lung. It affects the digestive system. We can't allow things to pass over us. If we're feeling sad, that emotion really takes priority over everything else. And so when we allow that, that letting go process to happen, and crying is one of the best ways to do it. And sometimes people need a little help to cry. Yes. So m Moonlight, you know, a lot of those, those kinds of movies just really bring all the tears up. A lot of the Pixar movies, honestly, are great for that stuff too. You know, Inside Out is another one that is just really lovely at kind of getting to, getting to grief and cleaning your emotional space, crying allows us to to have a new perspective to kind of start changing directions mm. so that's one of the one of the most important things that i recommend in the fall is have a couple good cries because it it helps you to clean things out so that then you're ready to do the deep investigative work of what is there in the winter time what i don't recommend is doing things like vision boarding or trying to project what is happening in the future the fall is about turning in so it's a time of like completion of projects from that, you know, Q3 corporate sort of perspective going into Q4, right? Mm. But bringing those 2023 goals to a close, thinking about how to create completion for yourself, et cetera. It's, it's not the time to start new stuff. It's the time to finish up the projects that you started over the course of the year or things that you were working on over the summer. I, I want to go back to what you said about fall being a time uh, tears being a great way to let go, to create space, but you have to let go to create the space. And you said for, t for skin problems, how does that relate to skin problems? Yeah, sorry. I did kind of gloss over that a little bit, didn't I? So the metal system has organs, has channels, has a time of year, has an emotion, and also has a tissue type. And so metal is about how we protect ourselves from the outside. So our skin is one of the ways that we protect ourselves from the outside. And it's how we kind of define what is self versus non-self. I start here where my skin is. And then everything outside of my skin is not me. And everything inside of my skin is me. So when you think about 
we'll put it in this way in the in the passage of time the reason that we think that we honor time or that we honor people in our lives is because our time on this planet is limited people become precious because we only have this weekend together or we have we're getting together for for dinner or or something along those lines so it's the the passage of time that allows us to honor the relationship that we're having or or our mother's role in our life or our father's role in our life everything that along those lines so when we when we think about the fall and the letting go it's also the grief and sadness that comes with letting go of a parent or a grandparent when they've passed away and releasing that and kind of i don't want to say brushing that off of our skin but allowing it to pass through us instead of holding on to us in an inappropriate way. Mm -hmm. So skin eruptions, acne and eczema and all that kind of thing come to the surface because the body is trying to get rid of them. And it can't quite push it from a Chinese medicine perspective all the way out. So it gets it out as far as it can go. Mm -hmm. And so if we cry, if we allow ourselves to emote, if we allow ourselves to let go, then the body is able to push that I'm just going to use the word toxin. I, I hate yeah. that word, but it's the most generic that I can can I think of that that problematic emotion or thing out of our system. Mm hmm. It's like washing, like a, a washing. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And our eyes are the are our perspective on the world, right? Mm -hmm. So when we wash our eyes, we're able to see things in a different way. Mm. And. Dr. Cena, is it true that our tears have different chemical composition if we're crying from like grief or sadness versus if we're crying because something got in our eye, you know how, and we just start crying because it's just the eye is tearing up. Is it true that the emotion affects the composition? I have not heard that, but I would not be surprised. Mm. I would not be surprised because the, the body is just so wise. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit more mucus, mm. you know, that we're secreting if there's something that we're trying to wash out <laughs> as opposed to just the saline that's coming out, you know, that's, that's just salt water. Oh uh, yeah. It's coming out when we have tears, but I, I can neither confirm nor deny that that okay. is actually the okay. case. Well, I'll just tell you when you said the mucus, not to gross anybody out. It's true. When I have more emotion, when these tears are about emotion, there's definitely mucus production, you know, all over the whole <laughs> eye, throat, nose situation. So that makes sense. And I, I guess I just want us, I wanted us to hang out in this whole grief thing for a minute, because as you said, I think we've forgotten how to grieve. You know, I think so much of our, to be successful, don't let them see you cry, you know, don't cry. I'll give you something to cry for. It's like, some reason we just kind of just, have this thing that tears are, I don't know, a waste of time or something. Yeah. It is one of the things that has struck me so powerfully in watching the, both the Israeli and the Palestinian videos that I've been seeing mm. is especially the men crying mm. because in our country, we have really made it not okay mm. for people that identify as being male to express anything but anger. They're allowed to be mad. They're allowed to be frustrated. They're allowed to beat their chest. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to crying mm -hmm. or grief, mm -hmm. they're just not allowed to have that feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think because we prioritize male characteristics over female characteristics in this country, like mm -hmm. you said, it has also been a thing where, you know, there is no crying in baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. like, and so we're suppressing our emotional health and our ability to express those emotions in many, many different facets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crying is, is just, and it is one of the things that I feel like I have to recommend as a doctor because yes. I use still a little bit of that hierarchy and say like, no, this is really, is good for you. And here's why, here's why it's, it's just, it's critical to be able to to feel sad about something and to say, I, this is, this is invading me. This is 
you know, overcoming my boundaries. Mm -hmm. This is pushing me to a place where I am uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. or this is about letting go of Mm -hmm. something and saying, okay, I I can no longer have this person, this activity, this whatever in my life. Mm -hmm. I have a dear friend who, who broke her hip and she was an avid bicycler Mm -hmm. and had seven or eight bicycles, you know, in her basement and has had to let that go. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be a thing that is, you know, a job or a person, Mm -hmm. but that activity that she found so much love in, and there really was a deep grieving process that had to happen around that. Yeah. And I know one of the important books that I've read that we talked about on the show is The Healing Wisdom of Africa and by Maladoma Somme. And what he brought to United States and North America from West Africa were grieving rituals because Mm. he noticed that, wow, we do not do grief. (laughs) I mean, you know, even at funerals, people are supposed to be strong, quote, be strong, like you said. So I, I really appreciate you bringing that up now and giving us something very simple, like, okay, it's okay. Go watch a movie. It's a sad movie, but This is going to help you do something for your body. And by washing it out, you'll get to see the situation a little bit differently. I I just love that. That's what's possible if you let yourself go into grief. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something you've been able to do? Because I know you were really into surgery and Western medicine, and then you made this shift. How, How have you personally been able to apply this? I think it comes off in, in onion layers, you know, some of the layers of the onion are thicker than others, but I left surgery in 2009. So it's been 14 years in a couple of weeks. It will be 14 years since my arm first became problematic. And I think, you know, bodies again are so wise and the, the Vander Kolk book about the, the body knows the score talks about some of the chronobiology that the body knows the time of year whenever things are, or, you know, traumatic events have happened and we're sort of reliving that time of year. So I always have kind of a little bit more pain in my right arm around that mid November time. And then it, it goes away very quickly. But what I do whenever that starts to show up is first of all, acknowledge it instead of saying like, well, what's going on? Let me just take some ibuprofen and get rid of this, but listen to my body and say, okay, what's, what's happening here. I usually do some journaling. I might look at some old pictures. I have still one of my lab coats from residency. And so I will sometimes take that out and just kind of take a look at it again and, and say goodbye to that part of me. I might chit chat with um, another woman who is a a surgeon buddy of mine to kind of just, well, where would I have been if I had stayed with that, et cetera. So I, I, I think for years, I, I cried about it a lot in the very beginning. And then I tried to say, okay, this, I need to be done with this. I need to move forward, you know, but now I, I think I've reached kind of more of a happy medium where I'm not trying to ignore it, but I'm also not dwelling on it. I'm, I don't feel actively sad anymore about losing that part of my life, but it is still something that that was a traumatic event that was a lot of work that then I didn't really get to reap the benefits from all that hard work. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's important to acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. You just sound like a wise woman right there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, at 52, I can get just a little, I'm starting to get just a little bit of Crohn's knowledge, right? Yes, uh... <laughs> you're in the magic decade. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. We're going to take a break right here for our, to hear some words from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So Dr. Cena, you were telling us all about, you know, metal, the lungs, the the big intestines. I always want to know about food. (laughs) So could you please tell us some good foods to eat now 
in the middle of fall, heading towards winter, what would you recommend we do with our bodies and food? Absolutely. There are so many foods that I think about in the fall, in particular being good for all the viruses and the bacteria that we start passing around to each other when we start coming back to work after our summer vacations. And especially any little people that you happen to be living with who have classrooms full of other little germ factories, and then they bring those germs home. So the foods that I think about in the fall, number one, I would say is shiitake mushrooms. They strengthen the immune system. They lower what's called CRP, your, your, one of the, the chemical messengers in your body that kind of deals with stress overall. And it increases something called your secretory IgA, which is a, a, an antibody that you secrete onto your mucous membranes. So that's in your nose, that's in your mouth, that's in your throat, that's in your digestive system. So because it supports that, that little chemical messenger of an immunoglobulin or an antibody, it binds to pathogens and prevents them from getting inside your body. And some of the lipopolysaccharide, again, another chemical component in, in the mushrooms, modulates the immune system responses in the gut and reverses age-related composition of the gut microbiome. And that's a lot of fancy jargon to say it helps with gut health overall. It helps with the bacteria and the yeast and so forth that are living in your digestive system that are actually helping and supporting your health overall. So shiitakes have antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal tech effects, and they also are anti-tumor because they're really high in vitamin D. They strengthen bones. They're just, they're really fantastic. So as a fall food, some shiitake action is a great way to go. And then I also recommend a couple of herbs, turmeric in particular. And Say that again. is the active turmeric. Oh, turmeric. It's the okay. yellow stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the yellow stuff in curry. It's not the same as cumin. The curcumin is the active component in turmeric. And that helps to suppress infection from a lot of different viruses, RSV, hepatitis C, influenza, et cetera. And it's also antibacterial too. Now, one thing to know about turmeric is that in Chinese medicine and in Ayurveda, it's a warming herb. So if you're taking it as an anti-inflammatory for your joints, for example, only use it if your joints need warming. If your joints actually feel better when you put a cold compress on them, don't add turmeric to your system. And turmeric is also, it doesn't get absorbed very well across the digestive system wall. So if you're going to take it for joint pain or you want kind of a whole body anti-inflammatory response, you need to add some pepper with it. Don't how just much, take it by itself. How, how much turmeric would you need to take for it to actually help you? Are we talking like, like, you know, when I cook with turmeric, I'm cooking for the whole family and I only use half a teaspoon in the thing I made last night. Is that actually enough to have an impact? It is if you're using it frequently. Oh, okay. So there's a dose response curve. And the way that we establish that with pharmaceutical medicines is that we give everybody, say, 100 milligrams, and we kind of see how many people have X, Y, or Z amount in their bloodstream. Well, there's no real turmeric pharmaceutical company out there. So they're not doing those same dose response curves. So the level that you need for cooking spices is a little bit different than what you need for having some kind of therapeutic effect. And for that, I would, I don't think that there's just one number because it depends on what pharmaceutical medicines you're taking it for. Are you taking it for some of your digestion and also as broad based anti-inflammatory? So mm. I'm not comfortable giving just like a number for everybody, everybody because I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Right, right, right. And yeah. if we wanted yeah. to, is there, who in our lives that we consult? Like, would we need to go to a, a traditional Chinese medicine person like you? Who would know something like this to help us? Yeah, great question. Naturopathic doctors. So natural pathopathic is the way that's spelled as opposed to napropathic. Those folks are just phenomenal herbalists. They know about Eastern herbs, they know about Western herbs, and they know a lot about those dose kinds of components, those dose kinds of questions for various different problems. Mm -hmm. So ND is the abbreviation behind their name, mm -hmm. and that's what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you.
Sure. Some other foods that are really helpful in the fall that a lot of us cook with all, all the time are onions and garlic. They are so broadly antimicrobial and they have widespread health benefits. And, and most people know them about cholesterol or know about them in the context of cholesterol and high blood pressure and all that kind of thing. But people don't necessarily think about onions and garlic helping to ward off pathogens that are trying to invade as, you know, as respiratory problems. So those are other just really, really good ones. And if we cook those, are they still powerful or do they need to be eaten mm -hmm. raw? No, they do not need to be eaten raw. They're still quite powerful. Nice. Yeah. And the last thing I did want to share with your listeners is a little recipe for electrolytes. Because oh, a lot of people, whenever second. they start, yeah, I'm going to put, we'll put this in the show notes too. 